Hi, um, my name is Adam Blaine, and I am doing tonight's Rand Talk on suits. Um, it'll be a guide to all aspects of men's fashion regarding suits. So the first thing you need to know about suits um, is you need to figure out what color you want to wear. Um, there are many different colors for suits, but the most important aspect is that you want a suit that's versatile that you can wear in a business setting because as a software engineer, you're going to be wearing a business suit. Um, so the four basic colors are black, navy, charcoal, and gray, which is slightly lighter than charcoal. So black, you're not going to want to wear this for a career fair or for a job interview. Um, it's not really a day suit. You're going to wear it for funerals or for like a night on the town. Um, with contrast, so like your, it'll contrast with your skin, draining your color. Um, also, um, black is maybe more for formal events, say you're a musician and you're performing. Um, then you have navy. So navy is one of your two set suits that you need to own in your wardrobe. It's not um, quite as formal as charcoal, but it can make men look younger. Um, it's very versatile. You can go to a job interview, to a career fair, um, you can go to work, you can go to a wedding, even a funeral, and then do all that in a navy suit. It should be like your second choice suit to a charcoal suit, um, and you want to get a solid navy suit as your one of your first two suits. Um, then there's charcoal, which is your standard day suit. It's the most versatile. You can wear it for any purpose, really. You can go um, to a wedding. You can go to a funeral. You can go to a job interview. And all you have to do is change it up like your shirt and tie. Then you have your gray suit. There's many different variations on this name. There's light gray or Cambrian gray or Cambridge gray. It all depends where you're from or what shade the company is trying to pass it off as. It's not as formal as charcoal, but it's definitely interesting. It's different and it will make you stand out a little bit because it is formal enough to do in a job business setting. It's light enough that you can wear it during the day. Um, not really recommended so much at night because it is a brighter suit meant for light. Um, it's great for business and wedding settings, definitely. And you can wear it with a huge range of dress shirt colors. And now we're going to go on to suit type, which are um, if you're going to wear one two, three, or four button suits, and whether you're going to wear a vest or not. So a one button suit I wouldn't recommend for a career fair. A one button suit was originated by a jazz musician, Miles Davis. It's meant to come off as like an arrogant, strong, in your face, I'm a very confident person. And that's not necessarily the kind of message you want to be sending to a job interview. Definitely you want to be confident, but you don't want to be arrogant. Um, nowadays it's becoming more of a fashion suit. And it's more acceptable, but it still not, shouldn't be commonplace for maybe your first impression on an interview or career fair. Um, Two-button suits are the standard, and they have always been, and they probably always will be the standard for fashion and for job interviews and for business and for any setting you could really need. It lends towards business applications. Um, for, most, for the most part, you're going to button only the top button. You will never bottom the button, bottom button of any suit that exists ever. And if you do, you shouldn't be wearing a suit. Um, so the two button suits are come in just about every range of fit possible, and that is the most common suit you're going to find to be able to purchase. Um, three button suits are all becoming more common. They've been popular in the early 2000s. And they're fine for business settings. Um, it's more formal than a two-button suit, but it's not really, it covers up too much. Like, you're not going to see as much of your tie, and it's not quite as flexible as a two-button suit. And you need that for when you're going to be moving around in a business setting. Um, and if you're going to wear the three-button suit, you never bottom the button button as well. And you, the rule is basically top button sometimes, middle button always. Bottom button, never. And then four button suits are great if you're an ESPN broadcaster. So four button suits are worn only by either athletic announcers or by athletic personalities. So unless you are on the NBA or um, on a baseball team, like a MLB, like the Yankees or something, you're not going to wear a four button suit. It's just not mm, useful for a business setting and it's 
it might be a little too different for a job interview setting. And then suits, you can wear them with a vest or without a vest. Personally, I love the vested suit, especially in the workplace. Say you're working for a company and you go in and it's warm and you take off your blaze and you take off your jacket, but you don't take off um, but you still have a vest on. It's gonna be a lot more dressy than wearing just a shirt and a tie. And it's a lot more professional and it's really airy, so it leads a lot more comfort if you still require to be formal, but not too formal. So not wearing the jacket. Um, vests are difficult though because you want them to match your suit and unless you buy the vest with your suit it will be very difficult to find a matching vest unless your suit is black which you should not be wearing anyways um, and now we're going to move on to what is a blazer versus what is a suit um, suits you buy as a two-piece the pants and the coat and they come together they match and it's all made from the same fabric um, Blazers you can wear if you're going maybe to a party, to a social event at night, but maybe not to a job interview or to like a career fair setting. You can if you wear um, like a nice pants with it, like you can wear um, like a gray blazer with a pair of gray pants, they don't have to match perfectly as long as the um, pants are a lighter color than the blazer, you're fine. Also if say the blazer, like my gray blazer has a pinstripe pattern. I can wear a solid pant with that and it's fine because it's a subtle stripe. You can also wear like a v-neck shirt or a t-shirt under a blazer, but you probably shouldn't wear a v-neck or a t-shirt under a suit within a dress shirt. So you have patterns for suits. You have plain suits, like this one. You have plaid suits, like this one. They also have a lot more subtle plaids, depending where you go. Um, there are check suits which are like this one. There's this uh, like a very, very tight-knit plaid kind of thing. And then there are also pinstripe suits, like this one, which just have pinstriping down them. Now, pinstripes can come in a lot of different ways. They can come tight together like this or separate. What you want to do in a pinstripe suit is not get a very wide pinstripe or a very standoffish pinstripe, because you don't want to come off as a pin. Um, there's also window pane, which is a pinstripe that's um, both horizontal and vertical, but it's spaced out like a wide pinstripe. Um, there's plaid, check, and then herringbone, which isn't really a pattern, I'd say. It's more like a texture element in the fabric of the coat. Pants should fit. Um, what you want is to have it go to about halfway down the shoe. Um, on mine, I have a loafer, so it's right about an inch or two on the tongue, or about halfway to a quarter way down the two laces. Um, they should fit in your waist, so that you can like, put a finger in there so it's not too tight, but it's not too loose that it's falling down without a belt. You should always wear a belt also. Um, and then you can have cuff or no cuff. Right now I have no cuff, which is just flat, where the hemming is wrapped around on the inside. Or you can have a cuff where it's wrapped around on the outside. Um, the cuff is more classic, like your Brooks Brothers kind of, I'm going to wear an executive suit, I'm going to have cuffs. Um, the lack of cuff is more modern. Um, also, you can have pleats in your pants. This has a single pleat down the middle. You can have double pleats, two on each side, or no pleats, like my navy suit has no pleats, and that's a more modern swimming kind of look. Jacket fit. Your jacket should go when relaxed about on your palm a little bit, um, and then when you stretch, you should have a little bit of your dress shirt sticking out. So you can see, you can have a watch and see your watch, or a little bit of your dress shirt. Um, so your jacket is measured, they measure your thumb, because each person's arm is a different length. So essentially, if you actually hold your jacket together, your sleeves are slightly different length, because your arms are different lengths. Usually, if you're left-handed, right-handed, different amounts of muscle, your arm will be a different length. So to make it look like they're the same, they will measure it and adjust accordingly. Um, it should also fit in your shoulders. Your shoulders should go and fill out completely the shoulder. You shouldn't have a big hanging shoulder pad where there's nothing there. Um, you don't want it to be too tight where if you flex or something, it'll rip. Um, also, um, you don't want it to be too loose that you can fit like two of you in there. We don't want it too tight where you can't 
move or bend or anything. Um, and there's things in jackets called vents. Um, you can have two vents like this one, each on the side, also called side vents. What that does is when you're sitting down, it allows it to pop out so it doesn't wrinkle and you can actually sit down. It allows you more freedom of movement with your suit. Um, one vent doesn't really serve a purpose, it's kind of just there. It helps a little bit with sitting down and then no vents doesn't really do anything. It just makes it tight. It looks good because it fits you better but it's tight and it doesn't lend itself to business applications. It's more, I'm gonna walk down a runway, I'm gonna wear no vents. Shoes and socks. You should wear leather shoes. Um, depending on your suit, you can wear, there's about basically three to four kind of general types of dress shoes. You can have white shoes, which you shouldn't wear. Um, there's Cordovan, which is um, a red-brown kind of shoe. Um, there's black and there's brown. Um, so there's some rules that are followed nowadays that a lot of older people will not follow. Like a very important one, which is still highly debated, is to wear black shoes with navy pants. You can do it, and it does work because black and blue do work, but you shouldn't. It's almost the concept of you're trying to match and you don't have that same shade of say I'm going to wear this gray suit with these gray pants, they don't match, and it's just like I'm trying to match and I fail. Um, you should wear a brown shoe with your navy. It's very fashion forward, too fashion forward for some people. Um, but you can wear a nice dark brown navy, you don't want a light brown because then it just looks gross. The dark brown should be darker than your navy or just about as dark as your navy so then it looks like a nice fitting. Um, socks. You should wear dress socks. Don't wear Nike, like, I'm gonna go play tennis and then put dress shoes on. Socks. Um, dress socks are meant for suits and for dressing up. They're very thin, so they breathe significantly more than an athletic sock, and they also feel nicer. They're made of nicer materials. Um, socks should go up to here. I think I can. <laughs> socks go up to about your calf. Um, you can get plain socks, striped socks, argyle socks, pattern socks. Um, I'm right now wearing argyle socks, which is it's a small pattern. Um, basically, if you're wearing an argyle, you want the color family of your socks to match your suit, your shirt, your tie, somewhere along those lines. Mine is black, gray, and white. So it matches black shoes, black socks, gray suit, gray accents. So. It's very easy to do that. Um, you shouldn't necessarily match your socks to your shoes unless it has a pattern on it. Um, because if you do that, it'll just drop <coughs> away from your shoes so it looks like just one piece almost. So if you have something like an argyle, it'll show that, oh, your shoes are there. And they're, especially if they're nice dress shoes, which dress shoes are rather more expensive. Um, you want to wear black shoes with gray suits, charcoal suits, black suits. Um, you want to wear brown shoes with pants suits, olive suits, navy suits. Um, socks should usually match the color of your pants, or you can get creative and match it with part of your shirt or your tie. So dress shirts. Dress shirts should not be huge on you. They should fit relatively well without having a bunch of like extra stuff. Like it should fit pretty snugly. Um, all over, and they should, when put with the coat, they should stick out that little bit. Um, a lot of stores today have a lot of different fits, and a lot of different fits will fit on certain people and not others. So there's Extreme Slim, I'm wearing that currently. There's Slim Fit, which is um, tailored a little more, there's a little more room in the arms. Um, Tailored is what most places will have as their normal shirts. It's a little bit more fitted than just here's a piece of huge fabric at a general size. So if it's a little better, um, and then there's like the normal shirts, like I'm gonna buy a dress shirt, and it'll be medium size, and it will fit me. But it won't fit. <laughs> um, what you can do is you should know your neck size and your arm size, your arm length. That is what you go by with a shirt size, like I'm a 15 and a half, I don't know, 34 length arm, which is a normal neck and then slightly longer arm. 
Your shirt color for the career fair should be a light color, like a white, a blue, like a light blue or light anything really, that as long as it works with your outfit. Because darker colors are more informal, more, hey, I'm going to go hit up a party, I'm going to go to the bar, rather than I'm a business professional and you should hire me. Ties. There are many kinds of ties. There are knit ties, which I would not recommend unless you're a hipster, and definitely not for a career fair. Normal ties, which have a slightly wider base, anywhere from about this width to this width, I'd say is a normal tie. You have skinny ties, which this is the skinniest tie I would go with personally. Um, this one's also relatively skinny. Um, ties have all sorts of patterns and different things. Um, I'd recommend, oh, there's also bow ties. I have one bow tie, I believe. Bow ties are the hardest to tie. There's a lot to them. And bow ties are nice though because they're for any neck size. You can just move it along, hey, I'm a 15 and a half, and then move it to 15 and a half, and then you tie it, and it will fit. Which unlike some ties, some ties can be too long, and then depending on length of the tie, you need to adjust your knot. And also depending on the collar of your shirt, you have to adjust your knot. Some shirts have a tight collar, with like button downs. Some shirts have a widespread collar, where you want a fuller tie to fill that out, so you just don't have empty space with a collar, unless they're from the 70s. Um, so, we're going to do four different tie knots, and then a one bow tie knot. But I'll probably wait a little bit to do that until I finish this, because that's a, an active kind of aspect of this presentation. Accessories. Belts, suspenders, and bracers. So, I believe it's braces. But uh, braces are suspenders, just the British word for it. Um, and then there's belts. So, you should always wear a belt or suspenders with your pants. Just because. Um, it's what you should do. Um, it also helps you from not having your pants fall down. Um, what they should do is, they're usually leather, and they should be, if it's for, if you're going to wear a suit, it should be leather. Suspenders are not always. But you should never wear suspenders if they're clip-on suspenders, unless you're a hipster. Um, a lot of um, suits have uh, buttons on the inside of your suits, which are where you would button on the suspenders. Um, those are actually getting harder to find nowadays. You'd have to go to a suit store like a men's warehouse or a grocery store to acquire them. But they do sell them, and they are very professional. They're just not very common anymore, having the buttons inside the pants for them. Um, so most of the time, you'll be wearing a belt. Um, watches. If you have a watch, wear it. If not, don't. I mean, you also want a professional watch. You don't want um, like a colorful rainbow Lego watch. Um, but get like one with a leather band or a metal band, but if you get one with a leather band, make the leather match your belt in your shoes. And if you get one with a metal band, have the metal match the belt buckle. So I've got a silverish watch, I've got a silver belt buckle. Um, I also have a silver tie bar somewhere. I've got a pewter tie bar. Tie bars are supposed to be worn slants. This one's quite not long enough for this tie. It's meant for um, the bigger ties where you, put, you can put it across, but a more modern thing is just put it at the diagonal. Um, so that should all match, all the metal on your outfit should match, all the weather on your outfit should match. Color matching. Don't match three different types of plaids and stripes. This is not a suit, I know, but <coughs> do it, because it looks bad. What you want to do is a more traditional concept. You want to have, if you're going to have a plain shirt, you can have a striped tie or a pattern tie. If you're going to have a pattern tie, if you're going to have a plain tie, you can have a striped shirt. Nowadays, we're getting a little more adventurous where we can have maybe like a plaid kind of shirt and then have a striped tie, that's fine as long as it's not too outlandish in the color spectrum. Like, you want to stick with the same kind of color family. Like, I've got grays, I've got blues, and then this tie has this hint of like a purplish kind of blue in it, in light. Um, 
you can do, if you're doing like greens, um, you can get a tie that's got, say you get a plaid tie, kind of. It's got greens in it, it's got grays and it's got blues. Like I can wear the same green shirt with a navy suit and with a gray suit and have it um, work with both easily. Um, if you get stripes, you want to have stripes just in your tie, not on your shirt as well, because 90% of the time they're not going to match. Um, stores. So, if you're looking for a suit and you live in Rochester, where do you go? There is a store called Incognito. Um, there's one in Penfield and there's one in um, Spencerport. They're both about 20 minutes from here equally. Um, it is a Plato's Closet for suits and only suits. I believe it's just for men though, which is fine. Um, it has, they only take good brands. Um, what they look for, they look for like Banana Republic, they look for um, Armani, they look for Capital Klein, they look for good brands. Um, they have a promotion all the time, $250. Basically you get a suit, you get a dress shirt, you get a tie. Um, my friend went there about a month ago. He got a nice Macy suit that set, retails for $500. He got three dress shirts. They were all named brand like Tommy, um, Donald Trump. Got three ties, all named brand, for $200. And that would cost you retail about seven to $800. Um, they also do tailoring there, um, and they rent out tuxes as well. It's a tux rental company that they incorporated into that. Um, they don't really have shoes, so I wouldn't go there for shoes. But they have plenty of dress shirts, plenty of ties, plenty of bow ties, all sorts of suits. Like um, what I was looking at last time, they have an Armani suit. It's about a fifteen hundred dollars suit. Um, they have it there for four hundred, which is a third of the price, and they will tailor it to you. So it's they give you a significant discount, and it's all perfect condition stuff. They don't accept anything with frays, holes, stains, anything. And vents. That is an adventure, more than a suit place. Um, I got this um, blazer from Ambets <coughs> for $3.88. And it fits almost as good as the suit I'm currently wearing. I got this about three days ago. Um, so it's kind of a crapshoot because it changes all the time, people buying things, people dropping things off. They also have more blazers than full suits, so they just have coats, but they also do have a section with full suits. What you want to do, if you do that, you'll get a suit there. Make sure it fits the shoulders because shoulders cannot be tailored, but everything else can, like sleeve length, how much it fits, um, all that can be tailored, just not shoulders. So if you find a suit that's maybe a little big for you, arms a little long, but the shoulders fit, get it, and then you can get it tailored. And for about like the eighth of a price of a suit, you can get a perfectly tailored suit. So those suits are priced about $15, 15 to $16 probably max for a full suit from Ambeds. They also smell those, you have to de Ambeds, smell them. But the, dry clean them or wash them. Um, I went to Coat Factory. This is on Jefferson, near Plato's Closet, um, before you take the bridge to go to like Highland Drive. Um, they have a lot of designer suits, like they have Calvin Klein, they've got Tommy, they've got Nautica, they've got everything. Um, and they sell for about 200 to about $400. And it's just the same kind of quality you get at any other store, suit store, but you're paying a lot less. Um, it's very nice. Um, that's also kind of like Ambest in the sense that you have to go back every now and then because it constantly changes. <clears throat> um, Macy's. So there's Macy's, there's all over. There's one degree small, there's one marketplace, one at Eastview. Um, they've got a wide selection of new suits and their retail value. So they're going to be anywhere from two to six hundred dollars a suit. Um, I think the nicest brands are like a Calvin Klein. Um, and it's kind of random. They sometimes have really nice clearance. Like I saw a $600 suit there on clearance for $170, but it wasn't my size. So it's all, it's kind of a, you go check, see when their sales are. Men's Warehouse. There's a men's warehouse right on Jefferson. Um, <coughs> just a little bit past uh, the mall turn on the left. And that's where I got this suit. 
and my other Navy suit, um, I would not recommend going there for the college income. I had my dad buy my suits. <laughs> they ch charge full, full price for suits. Um, anywhere from 250 for the cheapest brands to, I'd say probably 800 for their nicest suits. Um, they do tailor there as well when you buy suits. It's slightly more expensive than going to an actual tailor for them. They do a good job. They know what they're talking about. They know classic suit, um, what you'd wear, like get this shirt, get this tie with this. The dress shirts are also very expensive. They're about hundred dollars a piece, um, and they don't necessarily fit as good as if you got a cheaper shirt with a cooler color from a different store. Um, but they do do a good job. They have awesome sales randomly though. Right now it's buy one blazer, get one for hundred dollars, I believe. Um, I got these two uh, Calvin Klein suits. Uh, buy one get one free. So that's kind of really good. So you basically get two half price suits. Uh, Brooks Brothers, even more expensive than Men's Warehouse. Their dress shirts range from $80 to $130 a piece. Their pants, about $130 to $170 a piece. But that is like the epitome of classy suit fashion. That is definitely not a college income kind of visit. Um, they have very nice suits. It's their own brand suits. They're very nice, very high quality. They will last you a very long time, but they're just expensive. Um, what you can do though is, um, I have a corporate membership there, so I get 15% off everything forever. So if you ever do need to go to Brooks Brothers, let me know, because <laughs> I can help you out there. Tailors. So this first tailor, Fatima Byron, oh Byron, is passed down in legend throughout the years at RIT. This is a tailor whose card has been passed down. I was given to me last year at the end of the year by uh, Mr. Peter Janik. <laughs> Um, a recent graduate of the software engineering program. Um, she is a very, very nice lady who does excellent tailoring at a pretty reasonable price. Like, that's what you do. You go to AMVET to get your suit for $10, $15. You go there, you spend $70 to $100 on tailoring, and you have a perfect fitting suit that you would have spent hundreds upon hundreds of dollars anywhere else. Um, it's the website's right there, thimbletailor.com. It'll be online. Uh, Men's Warehouse does tailoring. It's slightly more expensive than Fatima, and it's, I mean, tailoring's tailoring. If you're going to spend more money for the same thing, why do it? Then there's this place, which is also handed down from Peter Janik. Europa Custom Clothiers. Uh, it's on Monroe Ave. They um, opened in the 80s, and what they do is they make custom suits and dress shirts for you. They will take every measurement possible that you can take on a human body, and they will cut from fabric and hand stitch you dress shirts and suits to any specification you want, any style you want. They'll get to know you and determine what your style preferences are, who you are as a person, and what you're doing this for, and they will help you pick out a suit for that that they will make for you. Um, what they did, um, Peter, they would go and call out they would come back and they'd go there and they got seven dress shirts, fit him like a glove perfectly, uh, $700, so $100 a piece. Same price as Men Warehouse, but you're getting a shirt that fits you. And what they use is extremely, extremely nice materials with very nice textures to the shirts. Um, a lot of shirts you'll see will just have plain texture, much like this, but when you have like a houndstooth texture, like a kind of a diamond-ish kind of thing, it's really sharp. Um, so it's expensive, but it's, maybe you get back on co-op sometime, just check it out. Any questions? Okay, make another point, um, dress shirts, not to, I'm not like representing these companies when I say to go there. Um, Express has an awesome array of dress shirts, and by array I mean spectrum of colors. <laughs> They have anything from like a nice blue to a lime green or a bright pink. But what they have is they have four different fits and they fit incredible. Like this is an extreme slim, they have slim, they have um, a tailored, which I have another shirt in and that. Um, they also have a, uh, they call it a modern fit. And they're all fit great. What they do is you can go in their store and try on, they've got white shirts, you try on the different styles and the different sizes and you find what fits you and you will 
fit them amazing. Also, like Banana Republic has shirts. You can really go anywhere and get a dress shirt because you only see this much of it. As long as you have a nice collar, nice cuffs, and a little bit here, that's fine. The dress shirt isn't really too important as long as it fits right. Um, the tie is rather important because you see a lot of that. Um, and then I believe that's it. When you said express, did you mean men's express or express men? Uh, they express in like marketplace. Um, it's so it's not express men. It's a different store. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Their their logo is the lion. Like the Scottish rampant lion is their logo. Okay. And all their clothes, their suits are also fit really good. Um, so they're just expensive. The dress shirts range about seventy dollars a piece. But you should never ever shop at Express without coupons. They have so many coupons that you get online, and you can get so many discounts from them. And right now, I think they have a buy one get one for like ten dollars sale on dress shirts. That might be over by now. Um, you also mentioned Sears. See, yeah, Sears. Nice um, I've got some ties from there that are really nice. I've got a blazer from J.C. Penney's, which is really nice. You can go to those places, and they're significantly cheaper than a men's warehouse. But I've said if you're going to go to a place like that, you should just go to Incognito. Um, because their selection is really good, um, and you're going to get like a, a suit that lasts you a long time from them for the same price as JCPenney's, and it'll be tailored to you, which I don't believe JCPenney's does, or Sears. Um, so any more questions? You mentioned there was a tie clip. Yes. What is that for? So the tie clip <laughs> is rarely worn these days. There's things called tie tacks and tie clips. Tie tacks. Um, impale the tie, which is bad. I do not like that. It's actually a physical pin that goes into your tie and uh, latches behind your button. I would not recommend that because ties are made of whatever, whatever material the ties are made of. It can, taking that out, it can like ruin your <coughs> um, But it's meant for basically, I mean, it's kind of really aesthetic, but it can hold your tie down when you're walking, so it's not like flipping over your shoulder when you're walking. <laughs> Or it doesn't come out of your suit when you're walking because it ties it. The clip goes behind, uh, on the tie and underneath your dress shirt. Um, also, suits. This is completely useless these days. This uh, buttonhole right here is for the old days when you have the top hats and then the cord to <laughs> put it in here when you um, would go walking so it wouldn't blow away. Does that mean you're not supposed to do that anymore? I don't. If you have a top hat. I don't know of numerous places that sell top hats with cords anymore. Um, if you get one, then that's awesome. So it's it's not a faux pas if you True. decide that's to what, use I mean, that's it. That's what it's for. That's okay. It's only in sole use. That hasn't been uh, d discouraged then as a bad fashion thing. It probably is. <laughs> Top hats in general, hats in general, for the most part. And yeah, um, pants also. If they're like a nice dress pant, they should have at least two clasps. These have like three. It's got a button. A metal clasp and then another button. Sometimes I have four or five. I'm not entirely sure how those work. <laughs> but there's four or five. Um, I think is there anything else? The uh, the t the tie thing, the the clip. Oh, I can show you guys how the tie ties. Well, no. What but I was also, asking about was the the clip. Is that still acceptable? To, yeah, to wear um, I wear it for more formal occasions. I'm not going to wear a tie clip when I go to the career fair. Okay. Um, but I would definitely. I gotta wear it for more formal occasions, like say I'm playing piano for a Supreme Court judge, I'll wear a tie clip. Mm. And the tie is also supposed to uh tie's are supposed to go with this belt. It's right there, right to the belt. Right to the belt. You yeah. should never tuck in a tie. Um, if it's too short, make a smaller knot or use a different type of knot. If it's too long, but use a bigger knot. Derek. So uh, I know this is more in the tuxedo realm. Do you have any suggestions for cufflinks? Cufflinks. Um, I are you wearing a tuxedo too? No, I'm. I'm okay. just. I'm just. I have, <laughs> I, have one, I have one French cut shirt and cufflinks. Um, personally, I love the. Have you seen the silk knots? That's like your generic cufflink that comes with them, or they're like a dollar. Yeah. They make silver versions of the silk knots, which are beautiful in my opinion. Um, also, I've got just a another common cufflink is a rectangle with pearl, like a, a bar of pearl. So I've got, uh, I believe, a bar pearl and then like my initials. I wouldn't wear that for a career fair or a French cut shirt, but I do enjoy French cut shirts. Um, they're also becoming more rare to find without wingtips. Um, it's very common. It, 
I believe all tuxedo shirts that are wingtips have French cuffs. But I actually found for $20 on a clearance rack a Calvin Klein with a diamond texture, French cuff shirt with a straight collar at Lord & Taylor at Eastview. It is the only one and it fit perfectly. Um, so I guess we could do tie knots. So this is a half Windsor. This is my generic tie knot. Um, it all depends on the tie and the collar, but it's pretty easy. And if you forget, there's always uh, WikiHow or... Yeah, WikiHow's, there's... Yeah. Um, uh, or eHow. Men's Warehouse has very nice pamphlets that do... I believe it covers a four in hand, half Windsor, double Windsor, and a bow tie. Bow tie is very hard to follow from them, though. Bow tie I did by watching videos on YouTube, and then I just reaffirmed it on brooksbrothers.com. I would have had to type that today. But, so, if anyone wants to tie a tie with me, we have, like, 20 ties over here. And if not, that's fine. <laughs> but I'm left-handed as well. So it'd actually be easier to learn. So I'm going to start with the forehand, hand, which is your most generic knot, which most people do, and it looks bad. And you probably should not do it. Um, also, I can probably tie ties. That's what I'm doing, tying ties for some people for the career fair. So I can come to SSC if anyone needs help. But um, you want to start, depending on how tall you are. Oh, also, another note on dress shirts. Um, this one's weird because it's wrinkled. Don't have wrinkled shirts. But um, if the buttons, when you're wearing a shirt and you're not moving, if there's lines going in diagonally, like it's, uh, I don't know if I can make it do that. Like that kind of thing, it's too tight. Get a bigger shirt. It's um, not good and your buttons will probably eventually pop off. So every tie knot you're gonna do, except for one of them, you will start by upping the big part over the small part and then bring it around. And then for a half Windsor, actually I'll do a forehand first, sorry. So forehand I do probably a little differently. I start with the seam out and then I just wrap it around once. You bring it up and then through the knot. And that's your generic tie knot. Some lend to different styles of ties. Like, I don't think it'll work very well this time. That's okay. And what you want to do is just bring it up to your neck, flatten it, pinch it a little bit so it's got like a triangle shape, and then put your collar down. With the forehand, it's a really small knot, and I really wouldn't recommend it because everyone does it and it looks unprofessional and bad. So this is, I'm going to do the half Windsor which is what I'd recommend just about for anyone, no matter what type, unless it's a skinny tie. So same start as the foreign hand, but instead of going around, you want to take it and bring it through the middle. You want to pull tight, but not tight enough that you're squishing this. So you want it to still be square. And then you're going to bring it around the front and then bring it through like you would a foreign hand. And just put it loosely. And have your thumb in the back. And you're just going to pull. And if you have a dimple in your tie, you're going to want it in the middle. So you can just slide it over, squeeze a little bit. Ties inherently will have a dimple when you tie them. And you just put, pull it up. Pull it down a little bit. Get it adjusted just right. I also don't have a mirror, so that doesn't help. You should probably always try a tiny mirror. But hopefully that looks good. It's a if the small part of the tie if the small part of the tie exceeds short. if the small part of the tie exceeds the thicker one, can you tuck it in and get away with that? If you're wearing a suit coat, really you can. You shouldn't, but you can. So that's basically okay. Um, a double Windsor, I can't do with this tie, so I'm gonna have to grab a different tie because it's not long enough. I can probably do it this way. So a double Windsor is the same. So you're going to want a little bit more length. In your tie, so this will be because it'll be more substantial knot. So your tie will end up being shorter. So I'm going just about as short as I can. You start same as a half Windsor. You bring it around, bring it in, tighten it up a little bit, and then instead of going around, you're going to bring it in again from the other side. And this is a large knot very large knot. You're not going to want this unless you have a formal event or like a wider collar. And so then you bring it around. This is a more balanced knot than the half Windsor. The half Windsor tends to be more sided 
towards one direction, which is the one where you loop it through. This one you're looking at through both sides. I don't think this tie works really. <laughs> this tie is too skinny for a double Windsor. But the concept is that it's a huge knot. And it's huge. And it looks fine when it's covered up by a collar. You pull, flatten it, make it a triangle. Here it looks okay. It looks pretty good. It's a more professional knot. Can you use that at career fairs? You can use this at a career fair. Double Windsor, if you have a tie that can do it, this one can apparently, but if you have a tie that can do it, it'll look, it's very professional. Um, it's uh, significantly more formal than a half Windsor. And then this is a Prince Albert, which I don't want this tie for, I want this <coughs> uh, So Prince Albert is, a uh, super informal tie. I believe it's the tie that Barney Stinson uses. Um, and so what it does is, so you bring your tie, same start as every other knot. You bring it around once, you bring it around twice, and you bring it through. And what it does, it gives a kind of a tube concept to it. It's a really easy knot but it's a really ugly knot, and it's very <laughs> unbalanced. It looks more like a tube. So like I'd wear this slightly loose and unbutton this button, and it'd be more casual, but I wouldn't wear it with a suit, and especially not for a career fair. But if you're gonna go out for a night out of town, then definitely. Now the hardest one, which is gonna be bad because I don't have any hair, the bow tie. You wanna start with whatever hand you're gonna to use to tie. I'm left-handed, so I have the right side down more. I don't know if you start with the right side down anyways. Yeah. Okay, well I tie it right handed then. Um, you want about an inch and a half on one side. And that's the side that you bring over. And you start just like in any other tie knot. And bring it up and tighten it like you would a tie. So now the bottom part should be down. So this top part, you don't do anything. You set it to the side. And the bottom one you want to fold, I can't see, but I imagine like a bow tie. And you want to slide your collar points, but you don't have a wing tip, so it'll be over. You bring this down back in the front. Mine's a little wide here, so I'm going to try and fold it over. Can't promise anything. And then what you want to do is you want to fold it around that thing. And then you have a small little knot right here. And that's what you're going to bring this through. You're going to just take it and push it gently through. So that you kind of have the same knot you have in the front is in the back, but opposite. So you have a double side and a single side here, a single side in the back, and a double side here. And to tighten it, you want to pull the doubled sides. And it tightens it. And I imagine this looks like a bow tie, but I'm not sure. Oh. I don't have a mirror. <laughs> but then you put it in front of your collar because it's a bow tie. That's okay. Nice mirror. Thank you. Yeah, you're watching. <laughs> um, and that's the hardest now. There's a, it's there's so much that can go wrong, like having the sides not equal, having the back stick out of the front. There's also different types of bow ties. There's about two different types of bow ties. Practice makes perfect. Yeah. Um, this one is a little wider than most. Um, a lot more modern ones, like a Joseph A. Banks one, will be a thinner, as well as a thinner and slightly more longer one. Kind of like a Del Nye, which is like a Joseph A. Banks style. So are there any questions? Is there any reason why you'd use a bow tie instead of a normal tie? I would probably not use a bow tie at a career fair, unless you're trying to like put off some sort of image. But I would suggest sticking with a flat tie. Bow ties are more reserved for tuxedos, but if you're wearing a tuxedo, you're probably going to have a black bow tie. So that's more of a fun kind of thing, and you're sacrificing a lot of time to tie a bow tie to have fun. But it can be, it can be interesting. It can give you a nice concept. Like it works, that specific one kind of worked for this shirt, 
but it's more aqua than the shirt. It's kind of hard. Like I'd wear that with um, probably not as nice a dress shirt or any time not the most. Um, I wouldn't wear a bow tie to the career fair, basically. Mm -hmm. Also, you'd have to learn how to tie a bow tie before the career fair, which is a significant amount of work. And then this little bit, there's always a thing on the back of the tie. You just put it right through the back. And then you tighten it by pulling the little thing and then sliding up the knot. And then you make sure it's a triangle. It's okay. And you put your suit coat on. You call it a night. But any questions? Thank you for attending my talk. What? Oh, yes, Alvaro. Private lesson? Yes, sir. <laughs> Unbutton your coat. When you stand up, button it back up. Um, so I believe that is everything. So thank you for coming to my rant talk, and hope you have a good career fair. Thank you. Thank you.